Match review. If you guys are new here, we don't review just any types of matches, no. We review wrestling matches that you submit to my subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash wrestle. So if you want to be picked for match review, then submit your matches there. The highest upvoted match will get picked every single week. And I will do a match review for you completely free. That's just how this works. But if you wanna show your support, you can drop a like, even share my video, that, that helps me a ton. And if you wanna show even more support, you don't have to, but I started a Patreon. My link's right here, patreon.com slash Rassel, same as my Reddit. I have no patrons right now, so don't feel guilty if you don't. I wanna make a goal on this video, if we get 200 likes, then I wanna do a schoolboy and like JV or like girls wrestling match review every week, as well as a regular match review. And I'm gonna try and keep that schedule of having like two a week. Okay, so if we can get 200 likes, I think we can do it. I think that's very possible. But just jumping right into this, today our match review, comes from an Oregon State seventh grader in the 87 pound weight class. He's the one with the knee pad. Right as the whistle blows, boom. He's out to wrestling and right there. Okay, right there. Right off the whistle, you straighten your leg. And this is very bad because this is like a habit that will carry on into high school and you will get shot on a lot in the upper level. You know what I mean? Just try to maintain a low stance. The more you train it in practice, the better you're gonna get at it. You fake the shot, you shoot right there, okay. You got the single leg, but you can't pick it up. You know what I mean? Your mom's screaming, elevate. And what's happening is he has all of his weight on that single leg and it's not allowing you to like actually raise it up. And what you need to do is you have to shift his weight onto his other foot. You know what I mean? So basically what you do is you have his leg, you put your shoulder into his hip and you just take baby steps into him so that he has to start hopping on that foot and you push his hip over top of the foot that he's bouncing on. And then his leg gets way, way lighter and you can work whatever you want. Or from there, it, like if you really can't get it, there's a sick like lift you can do where you switch from having the single leg in between your legs to grabbing the hip. And it's all about the back arch. You have to like bring your hips under you with a straight back and then you have to arch your back so that your head almost touches the mat. But your head won't touch the mat. Like the person is gonna break your fall before your head touches the mat. So don't be scared. Next, okay. He, it looks like he was for a head throw or something. And then he gets right back up. Okay, he slips down, you get behind him. He gets his hips like right under him, he's right to his base, he gets to his feet, and he breaks out of like your top position, okay? This is really bad because like you had full control of him. You had the opportunity to control him completely. It's just, you got lazy and you were like, instead of like putting pressure into him, instead of making him feel all of your weight, you were just hanging on to him, you know what I mean? And you were letting, he was holding on to your weight and you were on your toes, but in that scenario, you need to raise your hips up and pressure into him. Like when you're on top of someone, your hips need to be higher and your feet have, to, like the rubber of your shoes have to be in the mat, pushing him down towards the mat. Being underneath you should be a pain. They should really, really dislike being underneath you. But he gets right out. You guys are wrestling, he goes for a really bad shot, and then he gets you in this front headlock. Okay, this is a tragedy, all right? He gets you in this front headlock, and you sit there for a second, right? What you need to do, you're already three quarters of the way done. You like When he gets you in that front headlock and you're already to your base, all you need to do is circle your hips towards his far leg and try to step over it. Try to hook his leg. You know what I mean? You were already on your base and he was just like this. You were behind him. You were in position to get the two. You just need to swing your hips out and try to hook his far leg with your left leg. You get out and you're in a front headlock. You get, you get put in a front headlock. Okay. He spins behind you. Gets the two. Okay, and then right here, okay, this is very important. You're gonna get caught in a Western hook a lot. You're gonna get caught with someone's knee underneath your foot while you're at your base, a lot. This goes against a lot of the things I say, but in order to get out of this, you have to open yourself up a little bit. You have to knee slide out, and that, what that means is like, so you're at a wide base, right? You're like this, their knee's underneath your foot and it's hooked. You need to turn your foot in. You need to turn your foot the other way by bringing your hip to the mat and pulling your foot forward really fast and getting back to your base. You're gonna open yourself up for like a suck back or a graveyard, I don't know, people call it a, a bunch of different things. But you're gonna open yourself up for a split second so that you can get your foot out. You have to turn your foot. You have to, like your foot's facing this way, you have to turn it so it's facing the other way and it'll slide out. But remember to do that, you have to bring your knee to your other knee, fall to your hip, and pull it out. You can get really like proficient at this motion just by drilling it. Like you shouldn't get stuck in a Western hook like that. Okay, and right here, he starts cradling you, right? No, and the most important thing to know, 
in a cradle is you want to fight that hand that's on your shoulder. You're trying to break that free. You're trying to get your thumb underneath the top hand. Whichever hand is on top, if it's like this, then it's going to be this hand. If it's like this, then it's going to be this hand. Whichever hand's on top for the grip, you need to fight that, get your thumb underneath it, and control the hand that's pushing your head down. The hand that, the, like, the hand that's at your legs, I've said this a lot in other videos, but like until you guys start fixing it, I'm going to keep on saying it. The hand that's by your shoulder is going to stay near you, so you can keep control of it. If you grab it and maintain control of it, when you break the grip, that's going to be very, very valuable. You know what I mean? They're going to stop thinking about, I'm going to cradle you, and they're going to start thinking about, I need to get my arm back. Like, I need to start controlling my arm. If your hands are out to the side. You need to focus on controlling that top arm. You need to, like, when you start getting cradled and you start getting overpowered, you need to take a deep breath and concentrate. You need to grab a hold. Personally, I like to grab the wrist and the tricep, and I like to push and pull to like try and straighten it, like after I break the grip. I like to like straighten their arm out, try to put it on the other side. And then that way I can use my head as leverage on their shoulder. I have both arms to lever their elbow and like it just gives me more control. I feel more comfortable in that position. And I can like stand up and shit and I can like do a bunch of things like switch. But the main point, when you're getting cradled, make yourself big, fight the top hand, control the arm and maintain control of that arm. Okay, that is vital. Get long, get long, fight the hands. You get out of that cradle. All right, you're fighting, you're sitting out, and you took too long to hit that Peterson or that uh, Grand B, my bad. Trying to get an arm bar. See, here, same thing. You need to focus on controlling an arm. You need to focus on controlling one thing. Put both hands on one and control one. Okay, and then right there, when he pushed you out of bounds, this could put you in trouble if you guys were inbounds. What happened was your feet like just weren't quick enough. Like you broke free, you weren't expecting that pressure. So your feet aren't used to like going all the way back that quickly. It looks like he touches your knee, right? But your feet should have already been out of there. He like touches your knee and you like trip, but your left foot didn't do anything. His arm was up here. Your left leg didn't hop back. You need to be work on getting your feet further away from you when you cut away because the pressure is only going to get worse as you get older. You know what I mean? Okay. And then they were arguing with the score or something. And then it's like the last two seconds of the match, of the period. Now this period you go on top. So one thing I want to note, off the whistle, you like jump the whistle. It would have been perfect if you had committed to it. But like you didn't hear the whistle, so you stopped and then like you didn't do anything when he did blow the whistle. You know what I mean? That was a perfect whistle jump. You just need to commit to it. He wouldn't like I really doubt that he would have called the caution for that because you didn't do that. He broke out right away. Like immediately he broke out. And that's because on top, you didn't have any pressure. Like I said before, you need to be pushing him down towards the mat. You need to have your hips higher than him and your shoulder pressing into him with your feet driving you. So you're gonna look like, you're gonna look like this. Like your feet are gonna be down here, your head's gonna be right here, your hips are gonna be up here. And you're gonna be pushing him down into the mat. Because if not, if you don't keep weight on their hips, then they're gonna stand up. Okay, now you get put in a front headlock. And now the reason why you don't get out of this front headlock is because you were being lazy right here. Okay, you're being lazy and you left your knee on the mat. When you're in a front headlock, it's a game of who can get their hips higher. You're trying to get your hips high and far back when you're in a front headlock because they're gonna try and get around you. They're trying to get around you. They're trying to grab a leg. They're trying to find a way to control you. And they can't do that if your hips and your knees and your ankles are too far away to grab. Now this is difficult, right? You have to use a lot of back strength. You have to be very disciplined to do this, but you have to like bear their weight. You can't just sit there on your knee because you'll get taken down just like he did. He gets a two on one on you. All right, your head's on the mat, you get out of that. Now you're trying to stand up without controlling a hand, right? If you're not controlling a hand, then when you stand up, you're just gonna get taken right back down. You have to sit out harder. When you're sitting out and you're switching, you have to like, you have to be cautious that he is going to step in between your legs. So you have to be ready to like scoot your hips out to make, to like bend your knee, like so that it can't get it on the inside of your knee. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna be like this, right? Going for the sit out and his knee is gonna be trying to go in here. You need to bend your knee and get your foot away. Like have your foot block his knee getting in between yours. Cause you're just gonna get put to your back. He's not really controlling you that well. You know what I mean? He's not, it's not like he's got an arm bar and a half and a leg in and he's like 
like you're screwed it, you're you're you, like you have the freedom of your hands you can do something you're not completely incapable of doing anything okay so last period just standing okay boom you go for a shot all right so you go for that single leg, right? You go for that far single leg, you do like a decent setup. You get in kind of deep, but you're kind of stretched out. What you need to work on is circling your hips and stepping over that ankle, okay? Because once you step over that ankle, then you at least have some control of his leg and hips. And all he has, all he can have is a whizzer in. I don't even think he had a whizzer here, right? You have that far leg and he's getting out. And then like, once you see him stretch all the way out, then you have to start working different. You have to like start switching sides, uh, sitting out, knowing when to back up. I mean, that could have been a finished takedown. He's got head position on you. All right, you get another shot. You got in really deep on another shot, like on a sweet blast double, but you stopped. As soon as you got into position, you stopped. You need to be able to like drive all the way through. You need to be able to commit to your shot because you got into position, you got in deep, you just didn't commit. You didn't keep your feet moving. You need to keep your feet running and circling the whole time. Okay, now he's got you in like a really bad head throw. And like, like this happened before, you like, right then, if you would have circled your hips and tried to step over his leg, maybe put a leg in, then you could have scored those two points. You could have scored right there, but instead you guys went back to neutral. Go for another shot and you just, like your feet stop moving. Look, you step over the leg, there we go. Keep your hips high. He's grabbing your ankle. Ah, oh, you need to keep your hips behind you. You need to keep your hips behind you, right? You let, you let your feet get in front of you instead of like, keeping your base. The first thing you need to focus on, sitting back. Like you, like when you're underneath their legs like that, you need to sit back onto your ankles and then work swimming out and then turning into them. You can't let them grab a hold of your ankle like that. But you let them grab your ankle. You're in good position. He's got your arm, it looks like. He's like bending your arm the wrong way. And then he got the two. There's a lot of things that you can take away from this, but if you guys like that video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Remember, I'm trying to get 200 likes this video, so that I'll start doing two match reviews a week, one girl or schoolboy, and one high school match review. Check out my Reddit, check out my Patreon, but until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.